have left on. Vehicles pitching downrange. seconds into the flight, the Rumble's just starting to reach us here at launch control. Booster and ship, that avionics power, telemetry nominal. 33 Raptor engines. Max Q. Through the maximum aerodynamic pressure, the most stress the vehicle's going to see on the way uphill. 30 seconds into the flight, the rumble's just starting to reach us here at launch control. These things I've ever seen in my entire life. We're coming up on hot staging next. Ship engine There's start up. Most engines cut off. Stage separation. Stage separation, hot stage confer separation confirmed. Ship under its own power. I'm seeing six out of six Raptors lit. Hopefully I got a booster on the way back to me. I'm going to send it to you guys in Hawthorne. Oh man, that was incredible. I loved how the crowd came up with the crowd here in Hawthorne life. all went ooh at that first <laughs> view of the blue flames from the booster. As you can see there, first stage currently performing, or excuse me, is uh, now making its way back to uh, the launch site again. We are uh, the booster and the tower are both performing Shoot. automated Shoot. checks to make sure we are go for the booster to return to the launch pad Hopefully for that catch. On the way and back once those are complete, the flight director... ...in order to make that catch attempt in the tower. So incredible to see these views. You can see the ship on the right-hand side of your screen. All no. six Raptor we'll engines are the, uh, under full power. We'll wait to hear that the go for Once again, the, the ship, excuse me, the booster is making its way back to the launch the site. We are going to try and catch it using the and chopsticks so on the launch tower, the exact same tower that it just catch. launched from that means it's gonna be just, a really wow, exciting five morning. minutes ago. Again, the booster <laughs> is making its yeah, way the back Starship on nominal guys, I, I land, can confirm um, in order to the make command that was catch sent attempt in the tower. For the booster to come back. No way. That is incredible. So, I'm right now. For it. so incredible to see these it's, views. It's you can pretty see much right, right over ahead of us, screen. and we can see All it starting to come down. All six engines are uh, under full power. I can't wait for us to hear the sonics what again goes? through the Dan's me, mic. The booster <laughs> is making its way. <laughs> that is going to be incredible. We're now down to three Raptor engines. We can see those chopsticks now. Thank you. Megadilla has popped two shirts.
reflecting exactly what everybody else here in Hawthorne, uh, except maybe a little bit more because you got to see it with your own eyes. <laughs> How was that? We got it. But I mean, like, oh, like. I can't even. I can't even describe that. Oh, by the way, shit. Main engine cut off. Ships in orbit, but. I am, I am like shaking no, right now. That was, we didn't have our own footage from this. Yeah. I would think. 30 minutes, we'll return back at T plus 40 minutes while the ship continues to coast before re-entry. Oh man, and as with previous flights, Starlink may actually enable us to talk with the ship through re-entry with no communication blackout. We of course are still testing Starlink during this phase of flight, so nothing is certain. But if we do have views, we'll be sure to bring those to you live. Views or no views, we'll see you back here at C plus 40 minutes for coverage of Starship's re-entry, flip maneuver, landing burn, and splashdown. to see that plasma now starting to build up on the side. It's not quite full plasma yet, um, but we are starting to see that color indicate uh, that the heat is building up on the heat shield. Yeah, this is such a cool sight to see because you really never really have gotten to see this live before, uh, before flight. Uh, before flight four. four yeah. <laughs> um, and as Kate mentioned, it's getting uh, a little more red, as you can see there on your screen. That means that heat is building up. But that's exactly what these heat shield tiles are there for, is to protect against this plasma and this really, really extreme heat that the vehicle is going to see for the, about the next uh, 10, 10 more minutes or so. Yeah, so uh, the ship will attempt to light the three center Raptor engines, uh, and those are the engines that can gimbal or maneuver or point, and they do that to help flip the ship um, until the engines point down so that it can land using the Raptor's thrust in the ocean. So that will happen after we get through this re-entry period. Um, again, now starting to see, and we also might start to see the flaps actuate a little bit here um, as the vehicle controls its role uh, during re-entry. That was one of the main learning points from flight three was the roll control. Uh, didn't work quite as well as we wanted it to. We <laughs> learned that we needed some redundancies. So we added more roll control thrusters and we'll see those in action as well today. Live, uh, speaking of live visual, <laughs> the flap, uh, we have more views Views, uh, more cameras on board Starship, as Dan mentioned a few minutes ago. Uh, we are hoping that all four flaps will stay more intact than they did last <laughs> time. We did make some changes to the design in order to help enable Starship us. is now experiencing peak heating, remains on a nominal entry trajectory. Great news there that Starship is continuing along the path that we intended it to fly. You can keep track with how fast it's going and how high it is above Earth using the display that is there on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. And guys, this is, this is where we're really going to see a lot of those improvements from Flight 4 really come into action. Is you guys kind of talked about, so it's called the static arrow. Those are kind of the poke out points on the flaps. Those get exposed to some pretty extreme heat environments, and so we added some additional, basically ro made it a lot more robust for the thermal protection there. And we, we learned not just from visuals and stuff like that, we had those missing tile tests on Flight 4 where we intentionally left some out, kept in some backup layers. They're called ablatives, which means they just gradually melt away to help dissipate the heat. And we've got 
an entire layer of ablative underneath the tiles on this on this starship today so even if you get a gap in a tile or a tile is broken anything like that we've got essentially backup options and what we're really trying to do today is do an on-target landing as we lost the flaps you lose a lot of your control and so we didn't land right on target last flight this time we're we're trying to really nail the target any bird start up we're going to be able to get a, a ton of extra video of the heat shield, but we hit the target. We hit the target. Yeah. I mean, you know we hit the target.